the people of Zambia voted in the UPND to form government in order to express the challenges that the PF government had had and not for them to be giving PF excuses. Literally everything that has happened over the last 16 months has been blamed on the previous government. And yet it is UPND in government. This to the CF shows that the UPND was not ready and is still not ready to govern. You cannot continue playing a blame game and calling civil servants names when they are the ones who turned up in large numbers to vote for you. Two, mining corruption. That's the first quantum, ZCCM, IH and tax. At a time when we are in an economic crisis, it is very unfortunate for the government to trade the 20% golden shares we hold in first quantum mine for royalties. This is akin to a person winning a lottery and giving the winning ticket to a stranger to go and redeem the prize and then asking the stranger to be supporting you with an upkeep allowance from the very proceeds of the lottery. My jokes. That signifies diminished capacity to reason. We are at the verge of collapsing economically and instead of government fighting to increase its shareholding to at least 49% of this government, this government is seeking to sell off its shareholding in exchange, in exchange for royalties of 3.1%. This is not just a bigger mentality of moving from having a place on the table and sharing the spoils to sitting back and getting hand-me-downs. Ironically, the logic at play is equally in total contravention of even the UPND 2021-2026 manifesto on page 11, bullet point number five, under mining, which says, and I quote, put in place a policy and a plan to facilitate local ownership and increased participation of Zambian players in the industry. It is certain that the action the government wants to take is at variance with what the crafters of the UPND manifesto had in mind and more importantly, what the people of Zambia voted them for. Perhaps this explains why they are reluctant to bring this issue on the floor of Parliament for further debate, to adduce that this was shared by PF shows a clear absence of leadership of impeachable proportion. It is a fact that ZCCMIH is a 20% shareholder in Kansashi Mines. It is also a fact that $2.8 billion was paid out to face quantum minerals and related parties. And it is also a fact that $750 million was placed in equally related parties without following governance and KMP's treasury policy. It is a fact that the actions that this mining house has been engaged in has robbed the nation of billions of dollars that any leadership that does not have its hands less with corruption should have sought to recover rather than going round with a begging boss seeking an IMF loan of $1.3 billion, which will end up being displaced over three years. It's clearly, I mean, this deal are for, are with this quantum is clearly showing you that the UPND government is not interested in fighting corruption from multinationals. 
they are rather interested in fighting corruption from politically uh, inclined individuals. They would rather fight corruption uh, with the individuals who they think are in politics. Mm. And from multinationals, they are shying away. These are jokes of the highest proportion that we have seen in this country. This first quantum SCCM, highest transaction, is nothing but a scam. And I would like to call out the so-called ban to come clean and ensure that it stops this daylight robbery of national wealth. May I also call upon our cooperative partners to take a keen interest in this transaction as we know that if this happened in their countries whose directors would have been serving at least a 20... If this happened in their countries, those directors would have been serving at least a 25-year jail sentence and in some jurisdiction, this would have attracted a death penalty. Let us stop this reckless transaction that clearly points in the direction of appeasing election financiers. <coughs> if it is wrong in the USA, if it is wrong in the UK, and if it is wrong in China, and even wrong in Switzerland, <coughs> then it should also be wrong in Zambia. No matter how low one's self-perception may be, this is wrong <coughs> and it is criminal. I'm asking the president, on behalf of you, my colleagues in the past, to stop <coughs> this criminal transaction. We are asking him to stop it before we start commissioning our investigators to look at the shell corporations that are benefiting from this heinous crime and help the citizens by addressing the challenges of Mopani Copper Mines and KCM, which are further causing untold strain on the people of the Copper Belt. If Mopani is not managed well, we may end up having another wrong issue in Mufulira, where the mine is flooded and we can no longer be able to carry out any mining activities. Please get your team to find a solution for the mine, Mr. President. Not using institutions that supported your campaigns over the years, but those that want to do genuine business and are ready to pay taxes like any other investor. If they are able to pay taxes in Chile, DRC, and Tanzania, why shouldn't they do the same in Zambia? Why? May I also serve a warning on those involved in the ZCCM IH scam to come clean and avoid the blood of the many Zambians falling on their hands, as this will cause untold hunger and in some extreme cases loss of life. And as they reflect, I encourage them to read Exodus 34, verse 7. In case they don't know the scripture, I can read it for them. The Lord visits the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children the third and the fourth generation. A further caution to those entering into these deals, time is an equalizer. You will soon be caught by the arm of the law and you may end up paying dearly when the UPND is voted out of office. Please take time to look at Tanzania and see how the late President Magufuli handled mining houses. That had perfected the art of tax evasion. You too will one day pay the price. I always tell my colleagues in the Central Committee, never be too friendly with a bed you are going to eat. There is no way you can fight corruption when you are always having cocktails 
with the mining corporations. How are you going to fight them? Because they're always uh, eating cheese and caviar and all that kind of stuff with them. She managed to be all through and through. Shame, shame. Three, cost of living. One of the campaign messages that resonated well with the people of Zambia and caused them to move in their, in their thousands in favor of the UPND in the August 2021 general election was a promise to address the cost of living. Today, we are told that Zambia's currency is the best performing across the continent and that we have a single digit inflation and yet the cost of living keeps increasing. With the poor management of the farmer input support program, it is projected that next year the situation will be even tougher for a common man to afford even a single meal a day. We have families that are rationing, others eat today, the others eat the following day. It's happened in the world where people are rationing meals. If you have eaten lunch, it means the money is up. And you have to make sure you eat your lunch around 16, 30, 17 hours, so that it cutters for supper. That is happening. But our leaders, when we say this, they are saying Kalawa is just making it up. He's just trying to make popular statements. Uh, because for them now, they have become, I mean, appetite, yeah, yeah. They have to drink wine to have a bit of appetite. But they're forgetting that thousands are languishing in poverty. Millions in this country are languishing in poverty because they don't have means in which to earn their living. So, we want government to address these and such urgent issues and not them opt to give foreign large corporations the concessions while taxing their citizens into abject poverty. Today, a 25 kg bag of breakfast milli meal is going at over 170 kwach. And by this time next year, this time next year, it is projected to be around 250 kwach. Just how many citizens will be able to afford it at that amount, even factoring in the scarcity of the commodity owing to reduce supply in 2023? It's the eight years after independence. We cannot afford, as a nation, to fail to feed our citizens. Access to food is a basic right that each citizen must enjoy, and it's the duty of any responsible government to protect that right. Four, farmer input support program. It is clear that government has failed to provide leadership in the agriculture sector, which is one of the pillars in the economic recovery plan, as well as the eighth national development plan. How does a so-called methodical government radically move from having farmers receive eight by 50 kg, kgs of fertilizer per farmer to having four farmers sharing one bag of fertilizer? Even in Unip, they were getting proper bags of fertilizers, as opposed to these jokes we are seeing. I see. I want to tell you that you want to grow agriculture. What were they doing for 25 years in opposition? What were they doing? What were they doing? How does a leadership that claims to be pro-farm, pro-farming, start distributing inputs a week after the rains have started falling? How does a government that claims to have the interest of the people at heart just wake up and de-emphasize the provision of legume seeds simply because they do not have enough followers in that province? How does a government that has morality 
and the sound leadership send its leaders, senior advisor to start distributing fertilizer to chiefs. At night, leaving out the subjects. This is what they were doing. They started giving out fertilizer to chiefs in Eastern Province, leaving out the subjects. Giving because they heard the Paramount Chief spoke, so in the night they began giving fertilizer to chiefs, and then they continue playing games around. But if you give the chiefs only, they're the only ones ever remember. How does that translate in helping the small scale farmers? Kushaba and Fumunga was on Bola. They ship in the small scale farmers and was on Bola. Those are bad politics for UPNG. Those are bad politics. Very progressive politics. And they have to come to closure. The 2023 Farmer Input Support Program has been nothing but a total failure of the current administration. The process of allocating fertilizer distribution has been riddled with corruption of a, of a grand scale. This is another area we'd also like to call upon our cooperation partners to take interest in. If there's an area where corruption has manifested, it's in the fertilizer deals. Why were they cancelled in tenders? In tender Yafuma, they cancelled. This tender comes out, they cancelled. They were cancelling because their friends were not winning the tender. They were not interested in farmers receiving fertilizer on time. They were interested in their friends receiving their cash on time. And they're calling themselves leaders. They're calling themselves leaders. I would like to assure the farmers that our citizens first, we share in your pain, we feel your pain, and we would like to assure you that we know that over 70% of Zambia's employment is through the agriculture sector, and therefore we will treat you with the respect you deserve. Our solution to the issue of farmer input uh, support program is to ensure that we capitalize nitrogen chemicals of Zambia and introduce more fertilizer companies that will be able to support farmers increase the output. We'll also create an enabling environment that will...